people asked me to do so. So uh, the first writer we are going to do is John Wolfgang Goethe, or he is also uh, named as Goethe. Okay. So John Wolfgang Goethe was a German writer and a statesman. And he used to write uh, epic lyric poetry while while using variety of meters and styles in prose, verse, and dramas, and as well as in memoirs. So, in seventeen seventy five, he wrote his first novel, which is Sorrows of Young Werther. Okay, so you can see how his name Goethe and Werther both are somewhere uh, rhyming. So it is also called to be as an autobiographical novel, and it is written in an epistolary form. So can you tell me what is epistolary? Something which is written. What what what? Something which is written in the form of letter. Yeah, very good. So ah. Uh, Uh, yeah good so uh, after re- returning from a tour of italy in 1788 he, he started writing a major sp- uh, scientific work on the metamorphosis of plants and he published it as well and he published his second novel which is wilhelm meister's apprentice the ship and it was a verse epic in which uh, herman and dorothea uh, was published in 1808 and it is uh, also he is also famous for a most celebrated drama known as faust so you must remember uh, uh, you must be knowing dr faustus by marlo christopher marlo so uh, faust is written way before that and it is uh, way after that but it is somehow inspired by that same work and r w emerson was uh, highly influenced by goethe so he called him as a member of six representative men uh, along with uh, plato napoleon and shakespeare he was also fascinated by uh, abhigyan shakuntalam and it is uh, uh, he also tra- very much uh, felt like uh, having in accordance with kalidasa's theories so he pr- started propagating the theories of kalidasa's as well mm-hmm. so i told you about uh, uh, sorrows of young werther it is based on a literary movement which is strum on drang movement which is also known as storm and strife movement it is a movement which became prototype of romantic uh, literature okay so r- which was uh, basically meant to be for a writer who is more interested in passion rather than reason so what happens here that the reader is very upset okay uh, he is not very calm the reader is not calm and he is upset and the writer is writing for passion not for the, uh, the reason okay so it is what basically um, a movement from enlightenment to towards reason okay and it is also called as, as the prototype of proto romantic movement which means precursor of the romantic movement so goethe also used the term of uh, world literature i uh, do remember this this has been asked once in our exam who has used the f- first time used the concept of world literature so it's goethe and uh, in, what is world literature literature which is going beyond the world that's the world literature okay so uh, now i'll talk about the works of goethe so firstly the important work is the faust Uh, firstly, I will start with uh, the sorrows of young Werther. I have uh, written it uh, at the second place, which is uh, wrong according to chronology. I should have written it. So, sh- sorrows of w- young Werther is uh, basically a work which is epistolary and also said to be as autobiographical, written during the period of Sturm und Drang movement. And uh, due to this work, what happened? The Duke of Weimar. Uh, gave him a uh, place in the court goethe got place in the court and see what happens in this novel that werther was very much delighted by the simplicity in love and he fell in love with a lady named charlotte or you can say lotte okay or and charlotte is already engaged with a man named uh, albert albert and what happens that 
he is uh, constantly for uh, link for uh, lotte and trying to chase her and she also reciprocates it somehow but after a point of time she starts rejecting the love and uh, like uh, they have some s- sexual intimacy as well but later on she just denies and says that now i am married to albert i won't be meeting you and now uh, th- uh, we will have to consider this relationship as over so what happened uh, for uh, Gert- gerta being very much fascinated by love and uh, the romanticism and the simplicity of love he just thought of killing himself and he shot himself by the gun which was used by the husband of lotte okay so uh, when he dies nobody uh, like uh, um, only his uh, staff comes for the funeral lotte doesn't come to pay a visit to him and we can see a similar story happening in the great gatsby so uh, these this work is considered to be as a prototype of these romantic novels or the genre of romantic novels in which uh, this work became very popular uh, Go- goethe doesn't consider it as is as his best work but what happened due to this work he got immense popularity and people st- started copying whatever werter did and they they also started uh, committing suicide by following their noble hero werter okay so this led to a copycat suicide move, uh, movement or you can say werter effect in which you are trying to mimic suicide of a famous character and people started imitating whatever werter did okay so this work tells you about not falling merely in the uh, trap of love but to uh, establish yourself as a person which werter does but somehow he gets distracted by the path and then falls in love and thinks that love to be only the thing in this world and somehow goethe was also uh, having a similar affection towards a lady and he also in the beginning of his career he felt uh, uh, to be uh, very much uh, turmoil he was in turmoil due to that but later on he came to realize that the love is not going to make you uh, is not going to feed you okay so he start focusing on his writing and the next masterpiece which he wrote was faust and faust was written in two parts it is a tragic play and uh, the first part was published in 1806 and the second part got published in 1831 and it was divided in five sections so as you know the story of uh, dr faustus that he does sign a bond with the devil and then uh, he tries to live the pleasurable life but at the end what happens he has to pay for his sins okay so this play is also on the similar uh, track in which uh, the god is very proud of his man faust and he says that uh, he says to mephistopheles that you can not uh, trap faust in your uh, bond and whatever you will do he will not fall trap to it and you cannot do anything uh, which will distract faust from the path of uh, uh, a path uh, of god okay so what happens here uh that mephistopheles uh, tries different ways of seducing faust and uh, faust or of course falls in trap of mephistopheles and faust starts imagining himself to be the most intelligent man then he falls in love with a lady named gretchen okay uh and what happens that uh, due to this gretchen becomes damned like due to the whatever the activities faust is doing gretchen is paying for it but later on fall, uh, faust comes to realize this and uh, he asks for uh, like uh, uh, for the mercy uh, for the part of gretchen but later on what happens gretchen is uh, sent to heaven and faust is now condemned and in the second part what is shown that faust is marrying the helen of troy and having a son also and then he is going to win uh, the other countries which are there during that time and what is happening that at the end 
when faust is about to uh, confess his sins and now he is getting punishment for his sins gretchen comes and pleads on behalf of faust and says that please lord uh, grant him heaven so what happens do you remember uh, what how the end of uh, dr foster's happened uh, like uh, how he was dragged to he uh, hell and uh, he kept on pleading but nobody listened to him do you remember this yes ma'am here what happens here what happens uh, when uh, he is pleading for mercy uh, mother mary comes okay mother mary comes and grants uh, grants uh, heaven to uh, faust and what happens here uh, you can do a reading here that how the ladies are shown in a very positive light in this work like they are having power to grant uh, them uh, uh, for power to save them from damnation so save somebody from damnation someone from being damned so here uh, mother mary is shown to be greater than the jesus christ or the lord which is there and she is having the power to grant mercy to someone which was not during the period of elizabethan age okay and there nobody came to save faust even uh, fosters even at the end when he was uh, understanding that whatever i did was wrong but here the whole concept changes because here the concept of mercy has been added okay so do remember this uh, end ending of this work and uh, remember this also that it has been written in two parts then the next work is wilhelm meister's apprenticeship it was said to be uh, translated into english by thomas carlyle okay now i am moving to the next writer mm -hmm. thomas mann he was born in 18 what yeah. is that uh, romanticism is disease and criticism is hell close thy baron your your open the voice, voice is breaking for me your bro voice is breaking what is it At romanticism is disease, and criticism is hell. Close thy baron, open thy gate. What do you want to ask? Gate says that romanticism yeah, yeah, is disease, yeah. disease, yeah, yeah. and criticism is hell. Close thy baron, open thy gate. Okay, so Goethe, as I told you, he was a romanticist, but he also believed in the concept of free will and uh, Calvinism. Okay, so Calvinism always allows you to be a free man who will support uh, the whatever. Like you are not chosen one; you are not the chosen one. Whatever you are doing, you are going to pay for it at the end. Okay, so you have a decision to make, and. the god here is not mere an object or somebody to plead and then he will grant us uh, his uh, like he will answer our prayer something he says that god is very much like a human being and he is also watching everything like in the very beginning of faust only you can see that god has this firm belief in uh, faust that he will not do anything wrong with the man uh with anyone for anyone uh, he will not choose the devil side okay so he is trying to say that god doesn't have any authority here god is just acting as a path uh, guide guide and he is trying to tell that uh, if you will plead you will of course get mercy you will of course get freedom okay The next writer I'm going to begin is Thomas Mann, who was born in 1875 and died in 1955. Uh, his full name was Paul Thomas Mann, who was a German novelist, a short story writer, a social critic, philanthropist, and essayist. And he is one of the best known exponents of uh, what do you call it, exilitaire? Okay, literature written in German by those who opposed. or fled the hitler regime okay so he is a strong uh, he is strongly critiquing hitler here you can see it and in the upcoming stories also you will see that he is strongly uh, uh, opposing the ideas which were being promoted uh, promoted by hitler okay 
Munn's short first short story is Little Friedman, and he has also uh, written uh, he his works were translated into English by W. T. Lowe Porter uh, in nineteen twenty four. and he was awarded nobel prize in 1929 uh, i wanted to tell you do read these nobel awardees and booker awardees in detail okay this time also uh, if you have given the exam you must be knowing that we had questions on booker prize winners like who has won the booker prize and who hasn't won booker prize and we had one question on uh, nobel prize as well so do read these uh, works which are being given a uh, booker prize and the writers who have been awarded nobel prize okay uh, so thomas mann uh, basically opposed fascism fascism and he was uh, f- he, what happened due to that that nazi party exiled him to switzerland and he went on to become an american citizen and that's why he in his works also you will see in magic mountain he goes on to uh, the protagonist goes on to war and then realizes life and how life is really uh, like life is not what it is visible it is constantly changing and so does your choices also change like something from something to something else okay and what happens that he wrote uh, a novel uh, lotte in weimar uh, the beloved returns in which man returned to the world of goethe's novel the Sor- sorrow of young werther okay he has also written a work named dr faustus which i'll talk later on and he has written uh, a confessions of felix krux felix krull uh, which is a parody of goethe's autobiography poetry and truth okay and it remained unfinished so let's begin with uh magic mountain am i audible to you yes yes okay okay uh, okay so just remember the first thing that it is written as a building roman and the setting is in uh, a sanitarium okay sanitarium which is a uh, uh, a kind of mental hospital nowadays it is considered as a mental hospital but th- during that time the people who were suffering from tuberculosis were being sent to sanitarium okay so the setting is in switzerland and there is a major protagonist named hans kastop he is the only child of a merchant family and uh, he starts ship building okay so what happens that he decides one fair day to pay go and pay visit to his cousin who is there in sanitarium getting treated for tuberculosis so what happens uh, when he goes there he himself caught the uh, tuber uh, gets uh, caught by tuberculosis and he is diagnosed of having tb and now he has to stay in that sanitarium and the time passes from 3 weeks to it becomes 7 years okay and he has he has lived during for 7 years in that sanitarium and now what happens he is meeting various people there and understanding what life is so, uh, for example he meets a classical humanist there who believes in secularism as i told you he hated fascism okay um, thomas uh, thomas man hated fascism so uh he is meeting that classical humanist who is telling him about humanitarian grounds of life okay uh, how life is to be lived on humanitarian grounds and how life is to be uh, not seen just as a, for the purpose of having pleasure but it is also meant for betterment of the society then he, he there is also a marxist and he meets a lady na- named claudia and he falls in love with that lady and he becomes a very strict calvinist okay he grows on to develop this kind of uh, thinking in which he starts supporting calvinism and claud he comes to know when he comes to know that claudia is already married he suddenly feels shaken and that uh, humanist i told you he also gets killed okay so what happens he commits suicide so and due to all these things happening uh, in the meantime he starts thinking of joining the war 
ओके सडनली दिस डिसीजन कम्स एंड ही थिंक्स नाउ आई जॉइन द वर्ल्ड वॉर बिकॉज द वर्ल्ड वॉर फर्स्ट हैज जस्ट बिगन एंड ही डिसाइड टू जॉइन द आर्मी एंड ही गोज ऑन अ जर्नी ऑफ डिस्कवरी he he says that uh, my sickness has given me a life and my sickness has given me a recovery and now i am understanding life in a better way okay so that's the story of uh, magic mountain do re- read this one in detail the next work is transposed heads you must have read this uh, question has been asked uh, about this so it is about a story a legend of india uh is the story of sita of having beautiful hips and she is having two husbands and it is a tale of sexual desire and marital responsibility do you remember the uh, story hayavadna by grish karnad in that work uh, also you can say there is uh, there are two men who are fighting for a woman and then they cut their heads off and uh, the lady also dies and then uh, it becomes a comic uh, character in which a uh, horse starts speaking do you remember the story hayavadna by girish karnad yes ma'am <laughs> now i am going to talk about very important novel that is the death in venice okay so uh, yesterday day before yesterday we talked about lolita do you remember if you have joined uh, day before yesterday's class lolita which was the story of a pedophile and this is also somehow a similar story i asked this question during that time also that uh, thomas man has written some, some a similar work so in death uh, in venice what happens there is an uh, a man he is a writer named as gustav von eschenbach and eschenbach is taking a walk in a city of munich and he does not get any inspiration so he is going through writer's block what is writer's block during the writer's block movement what will happen you will be unable to write anything new anything of your own okay so the ideas will stop coming to your mind so he goes on a trip and decides to go to venice and what happens as he grows uh, elder and as he grows older he developed a kind of nervous curiosity okay uh so he gets inspired by this idea of male beauty and gets attracted towards uh, small children but when he, uh, when he in when he goes to venice he sees one boy uh who is come come who has come there for this trip only and he is along with his family and he f- suddenly falls a kind of attraction towards that boy okay and the boy's name is tagio he is a polish boy and in uh, the hotel in which uh, uh, hans kestop is living he is constantly thinking of tagio and he is thinking about the smile the way tagio smiled at him or the way he looked at him so tagio ne- uh, is not intentionally doing that he is just a small child so he is doing that because he is a child he doesn't have any idea what is going on uh, in uh, hans castrop's mind okay so what happens that uh, he th- starts thinking that ta- tagio might be loving me okay he gets this uh, he gets into this dilemma that uh, tagio might be having some kind of feelings for me and uh, suddenly this news is being spread in venice that uh, cholera is being spread so all the tourists are asked to to go back to their cities or to the place from where they have come so the day tagio is leaving uh, ashenbach feels very much sad and thinks of stopping him or going and meeting him but he cannot do anything uh, of that sort so what happens he goes in a very uh, very uh, pathetic situation uh, occurs in his life and he starts thinking more and more about it and he gets cholera and dies there in the venice city okay so uh, that's the story of uh, death in venice in which you will see uh, that uh, 
a man having uh, feelings for a small child or for uh, uh, like a, you can say a, ma a boy a little boy and he is feeling very dis uh, disgusted and in he is in despair and in frenzy when he doesn't get to know about that boy uh, anymore okay so he feels that longingness and thinks that his life won't be easier now and he gets cholera and dies there in the hotel now uh, he has written one more work named as the wedding groups yeah i think uh, joseph filler closing time and Sleeper or Goomen Stain reference of this work. Okay, uh, I didn't know this. Thank you for telling. Uh, please write it if possible. Write it in the chat box so that other people can also uh, note this down. Okay, thank you. Okay, Burden Brooks uh, is uh, his first novel. I didn't talk about it uh, in the beginning because uh, I wanted to discuss Magic Mountain and Death in Venice. So. what is the story of uh, burden brooks it is a decline of a worthy wealthy merchant and uh, what happens that uh, he is living with his family and he is enjoying life but suddenly he starts uh, like uh, feeling the pangs of separation and slowly slowly his family starts uh, uh, deteriorating uh, deteriorating and uh, uh, but what happens here burden tries to pursue mu music and instead of going for science he starts uh, uh, he starts feeling as if he is uh, more interested in music and he wants to pursue music so it, you can call burden brooks a family saga which is set in the late decades of 19th century okay now moving to the next writer franz kafka Franz Kafka was a German language writer of novel short stories and one of the most influential authors of 20th century and his most famous work is uh, do you remember the name of his most famous work and the major character of his most famous work metamorphosis yes and what is the name of the major character george greger greger samsung greger samsa so his themes are basically uh, dealing with the archetypes of alienation physical and psychological brutality parent and child conflict and the characters are in a, a terrifying quest to find about themselves to find why they are uh, here in this world to find the purpose of their life okay kafka had a very troubled relationship with his father which is very much evident in his work letter to his father and to some extent in metamorphosis as well and he com uh, he is complaining about being profoundly affected by his father's authoritarian and demanding character okay uh kafka did not publish much of his works during his lifetime and what he did he burnt 90% of his works his friend his he had a friend named max broad and he that person max broad encouraged kafka to publish his works but what he did he just thought of destroying them so later on uh, kafka's work got published by max broad okay so kafka hasn't published his works max broad has done it kafka wrote the judgment in 1912 and dedicated it to felix buer uh which deals with the troubled relationship of a son with his dominant father okay so again you can see that how troubled relationships are being constantly dealt in the works of franz kafka and kafka described this work as a complete opening of body and soul and a story that evolved as a true birth and covered with filth and smite okay Kafka began his no uh, novel in 1912 uh, he wrote a work the man who disappeared or the missing man and uh, it remained unfinished and uh, published posthumously under the title America so it has also got published by Max Broad okay he uh, there is a very famous term named as kafkes 
uh, which means to write similar kind of work as it, uh, Kafka has written, which is dealing with these existential crises. Okay, so he the, these works of Kafka is dealing with existential crises. It is certainly questioning your identity and why you are there in this world. So the next, uh, the first work which I'm going to talk about is uh, America. So it is the first novel of Kafka which remained incomplete and it is also known as the man who disappeared or the missing person. And the novel originally began as a short story titled The Stoker. And the story describes the bizarre wanderings of a 16-year-old European immigrant named as Carl Robman, who was forced to go to New York to escape the scandal of his education by his by a housemaid. Okay, and at the end of this novel, what happens that Carl adopts a name name uh, a name of Negro. So. Uh, it is not very important America when it comes to like uh, it is just a story of a teenager and how a teen teenager grows up but the, the most important work is the trial uh, the trial uh, see listen what happens in the trial uh, one day one fine day when uh, Joseph K is having his birthday he suddenly gets arrested okay and uh, what happens that he is uh, now free to go uh, after a few, a few uh, after a day he is released from the day uh, from the jail and he is allowed to go to work in the bank so he is uh, working uh, in a bank okay do remember this this has been asked in the exam and uh, later on he comes to know that he can hire a lawyer for representing himself in the court so he hires a lawyer named Huld. And Huld is re he really inefficient and he doesn't have much interest in what uh, uh, K's mistake is or for what he is getting such punishment. And now he has, uh, he, uh, K is, uh, is under this uh, trap that he has to daily go and visit court and he doesn't know what mistake he has committed. Okay, what crime he has committed. So what happens? Uh, then uh, what uh, he is uh, seeing some kind of vision and he is seeing that a priest of a, uh, a cathedral priest is calling his name and he comes out from the prison and there is a gate okay and he is constantly banging that gate to open it and to go inside that uh, church which uh, leads to the gate of heaven or to hell and where your uh, last day judgment will happen. So he is getting this kind of hallucinations. Okay. So uh, he is constantly banging that door. But the gatekeeper there is not opening that door. And he is asking him to wait. To wait. And while K is seeing all other people who, are, ha who have d done some kind of criminal activity. Or who have mm, done some kind of immoral activity. Are going uh, there and having easy access. But he is not getting the permission to go inside. So this hallucination also means somewhere that life is, you know, we always say that good people have to suffer more in this world. And so does K. So does uh, like uh, other person. So does Franz Kafka is also going through. Like he is also, he, he was under like uh, very much trauma. Okay, he was facing this trauma in his home itself. And you can see the story of uh, metamorphosis in which uh, it, is, it will be very much clear the kind of atmosphere he was living in. Okay, so he sees uh, that gate of law with the gatekeeper and he asks, am I allowed to go inside? And he feels that law is inaccessible for everyone. Okay, he is constantly waiting. But he keeps on waiting and never the judgment day comes. And this is the life. This is the cycle of life. You are constantly waiting for your death to come. For your, uh, like you are thinking of something to happen. Something next to happen. But that end, that fag end of your life is not coming. And you don't know when your turn will come. Okay. So, uh, what happens at the end of this novel? 
uh, suddenly we come to know that one year has passed and now uh, he's uh, he has done some kind of immoral activities too he has got involved with various ladies and now he is having uh, like he he wants to kill the officer with whom he is having uh, some kind of tryst and after one year two men come and what happens that they take uh, k to a pit or to a quarry and then they stab him in that pit okay like a dog his last words are like a dog and he was killed on the day of his 31st birthday and there is no explanation why he was being killed okay why why he was being condemned to death why they came and killed him there is no reason for that and that's what uh, this determines the absurdity of life whatever what happens in your life doesn't have any explanation for it okay if you are going through some uh, like miserable accident you the god is not coming and telling you why what wrong you did why this thing happened to you why you are doing this why did uh, why like why you were chosen one to suffer like this okay so uh, the trial ends with this uh, open ending where we don't know what what mistake he committed or what the what the reason for whom he has to go through that trial but everybody like every one of us are going through a trial something or somehow okay the next work i am going to talk about is the castle this is the only novel by kafka in which protagonist k arrives in a village and struggles to gain access to the mysterious authorities who govern it from a castle okay kafka died before fin finishing this novel and mm. it suggested that it would end with k dying in the village and k is also the narrator of this novel so do remember this that castle and the trial both have a protagonist names named as k okay and k rights uh, is k is having right to be in the village is questioned and it is resolved when he is about to die okay uh, k is not knowing for what purpose he is there in that village and he is getting to know about it at the fag end of his life just like the trials k did okay then very important work and the most famous one is the metamorphosis or the transformation metamorphosis means what does metamorphosis mean it means the word as change okay it means change metamorphosis you are changing from something to something else so gregor samsa is the protagonist here and he is a traveling salesman do remember this because they have asked once in the exam and he is also the breadwinner of the samsa family so one day he he is sleeping and he finds that he has turned into a cockroach or into a bug okay which is a large monstrous in, uh, monstrous insect like creature and what happens that uh, his family keeps asking him to come out and go to office his boss also arrives at his home to call him for office but he is unable to go to office okay and now he every day uh, lives there in his room he doesn't come out he never goes anywhere and his family members have also started keeping a distance with him okay only his sister uh, is uh, feeding him and that too with the food which uh, he doesn't like nowadays because he has turned into a bug now so he won't eat uh, the food which a normal person does okay but nobody is giving any uh, like uh, uh, any thought to it and they are treating him as somebody who is being a burden on them on the family members and they think of gregor to die okay and one day what happens that gregor is overhearing or eavesdropping and he hears his mother saying this that if this person wouldn't have been in our family we wouldn't have to suffer so much okay so he uh, he comes to uh, realize that uh, uh, he is no more wanted in the family and he starts deteriorating and he dies uh by this uh, you know, like by thinking and overthinking okay and uh, 
the, the moral of this uh, this work is that nobody cares about you if you are not the productive member of the family if you are not earning nobody is going to take care of you nobody is going to feed you and you will be felt as a burden some on on those people okay you will be treated as somebody who is very much unwanted in the family and so does uh, happens with um, uh, gregor samsa as earlier he was a um, um of the family but as soon as he became a insect he stopped being so much important to them okay so uh Now I'll come to the next writer, which is Gunter Grass. Gunter Wilhelm Grass was a German novelist, poet, playwright, illustrator, graphic artist, and sculptor. He was awarded with Nobel Prize in Literature in the year nineteen ninety nine. Okay, ah, uh, Gunter Grass is very famous for his work, The Tin Drum, which is a key text in European magical realism, and it was the first book in Danzig trilogy. Uh, the other two works are cat and mouse and dog ears i have given the explanation in the next slide he is very much considered to be active uh, in the left wing political dimension and he was very much uh, support uh, in in support of social De democratic party of germany okay so uh, i'll talk about his most famous work which is tin drum and uh, tin drum is, do you know anything about tin drum anybody have you read it think of a story of a child who never grow yes very good so tin drum uh, the protagonist it is a form of uh, dancing trilogy it is the first part of dancing trilogy uh, and the narrator's name is oscar mazzara okay so what happens it is a fictional autobiography of gunter uh, grass do remember this and mazzara oscar is writing this work from a mental hospital okay mental institution and uh, it is written during the turn of 20th century the the world war uh, second is going on right so uh, this man uh, oscar is of 3 years of age when he sees his mother having immoral relationships illegitimate relationships out of his her life uh, her marriage and he suddenly one day decides that he will okay from the beginning i'll start what happens when oscar has taken birth he cries a lot okay so his mother asks him if you'll start uh, stop crying i will get you a drum when you'll grow at 3 years of age okay so when he grows 3 years of age he gets a drum which he constantly uh, beats and uh, like everyone is very much annoyed by that and the, what happens then when he sees his mother having illegitimate relationships he starts hating himself and the way he has born thinking of him to be an an illegitimate child and he decides that he will never grow up okay so he uh, is now not growing and his mother is very much problematized by that that why my child is not growing and another as i told you it is a magical realism uh, no work so what happens that oscar has a very shrill voice he is having a very high pitch shrill voice which can be used to broke uh, break glasses okay whenever he is shouting at something or whenever he is uh, doing any kind of activity like uh, crying or something and uh, the glasses are being uh, broken okay so uh whenever he is singing also he is breaking uh, breaking glasses so what happens that he is now not going to school he is self educating himself and he found himself as extremely intelligent person who can take all the decisions of life just by being himself okay so 
uh, he is he has uh, a keen interest in raspatin or goethe and he reads those works and understands life in a better way and what happens that uh, after a few uh, years his mother dies and his father marries a girl uh, who was their uh, servant named as maria and hans kastrop is uh, sorry i ah, oh, hans kastrop oscar is having uh, oscar is having uh, feelings for maria but maria doesn't reciprocate it and maria gets pregnant by uh, her uh, his father oscar's father and what happens that oscar is very much uh, like uh, he is not happy with whatever is going on so he decides to uh, join the group of dwarfs who are performing circuses and his mother hated this his mother didn't want him to join this uh, dwarf community okay and so uh, oscar starts performing for a band called dusters which is also an anti establishment youth brand and he uses his voice to break glasses there and later on what happens uh, when maria i told you maria was pregnant by oscar's father so when maria gives birth to a son his name is kurt okay so uh, the responsibility of maria and kurt is on the uh, head of uh, oscar and they are forced to immigrate because uh, the world war is going on so they have to immigrate and oscar has to go along with them and to take their responsibility okay so oscar starts playing jazz band and joins in a night club named as onion sealer and later on one fine day when uh, he sees uh, that his father is being killed by some uh, the some people who are from other countries and who are take, has taken rescue in their house by being uh, saying that we are uh, uh, we have left the war and we have uh, ran away from the war and we want to take shelter here but they are not so and they are uh, of uh, they are terrorists and they kill oscar's father so to take revenge what happens oscar thinks of this uh, thinks of joining the army and uh, performing his duties okay but after a few days what happens as uh, oscar is uh, uh, removed from the army thinking of him to be a spy and what happens later on that oscar goes back and starts recording for a company of barbara and Uh, and what happens that he is now so much in uh, turmoil due to whatever is going on in his life and his uh, maria also dies maria's son also gets killed so what happens he is being sent to mental hospital at the end and he couldn't cope up with the uh, the uh, the things which are happening in his life so he grows mad and now he is writing his story there okay he is writing his story and narrating this story uh, by writing it and uh, we can see that how a person's self determination can also help him in uh, like in his personal growth okay so he has determined not to grow because he thinks the uh, community of elder ones to be very immoral okay so he has this thing that he will not grow up he will stop his uh, his growth but that is he could do it because he it is a work of magical realism it is a fictional work but somehow we are seeing at the end that the things are not that easy as it seems to be okay next work is cat and mouse in which there is a protagonist named as joachim malke and he is an alienated uh, child without father uh the third work of this dungeoning trilogy is dog years which has a protagonist walter matter and edward amsel who are both our friends and the narrator is broxel okay some of his major works famous other works are crab walk the box what must be said local aesthetics the flounder the rat 
and peeling the onion okay uh, do do remember that onion sealer is the band with which uh, oscar has went and started playing uh, jazz band okay and the peeling the onion is an autobiographical work by uh, by the writer guntergras okay that's it for today